the day Formula 1 changed forever. Now, motorsport is obviously extremely dangerous. When you're travelling at around 200 miles an hour, things can go very, very wrong. Take Jules Bianchi, a young, talented racing driver who was actually the first person ever to be in the Ferrari Driver Academy. He finally reached F1 and achieved his dream. And yet, it was all taken away from him so soon. You see, Formula 1 was racing at Suzuka in Japan, one of the hardest and most challenging racing circuits in the world. Now, Suzuka is known for its torrential weather, something very similar to what happened this year in 2022 weird torrential rain, but back in 2014 there were reports coming out about the circuit conditions. Apparently there was water flowing and rushing all on the track. And to make matters worse, daylight was fading. It was beginning to get dark, and there was also an oncoming typhoon. And on the same exact day back in 2014, the world of motorsport would change forever. Now I won't go into details about the incident. But to sum it up briefly, due to the torrential rain on track, many cars lost control, one of them being Adrian Satil. Now obviously, when there's a crash, they have to bring out tractors and cranes and marshals to help bring the car off track to make the track safe again. But back in 2014, we didn't have the likes of virtual safety cars to make it safe. But in this incident, when the crane went past the marshal's post, they waved the green flag to go racing again. And this is when Jules Bianchi tragically lost his life. Now in this exact same spot, Jules Bianchi unfortunately lost control of his car and collided with the crane. Now many, many other incredible horrific incidents have happened in Formula 1. Luckily many have escaped death and this has only been the first death in F1 since Ayrton Senna at Imola. Now due to this, surely the FIA had to rethink their safety in Formula 1 and all of motorsport for that matter. Now let's go to 2018. In comes the halo, this titanium structure sits above the driver's head. Its main purpose is to protect the driver from flying debris or other accidents that may occur. It was first introduced in 2018, and the FIA have made it mandatory in not only Formula 1, but other junior categories and series. Despite some initial resistance from some F1 fans and drivers, the Halo has proven to be an essential part of F1 safety. It has saved countless lives, whether it be Joe at Silverstone this year, where he spun upside down and flew into the catch fence. Or it might be Lewis Hamilton in 2021, where he had Max Verstappen's car on top of his head or saving Romain Grosjean's life in that fireball inferno in 2020. This halo has saved so many lives. But not only is the halo used for just safety, it also plays a crucial role in the aerodynamics of the car. The design also helps reduce the amount of drag the car has when it's driving. This can make a significant difference in the performance overall. Yes, the halo might not be aesthetically pleasing per se, but this feature of the F1 car serves a vital purpose in safety of the drivers. And as the sport continues to evolve, it's important to prioritize safety of the drivers above all else. But unfortunately, Jules Bianchi's crash was not the most recent tragic death in motorsport. Unfortunately, we lost Anthony Baer in 2019. In the 2019 race at Spa and Eau Rouge, which is arguably the most dangerous corner in motorsport history. With the high speed you take it and very little runoff, it makes the corner extremely deadly. And unfortunately, in this case, in the F2 race, it was. But what measures has the FIA in Formula 1 taken to make tracks and cars more safe? Well, cars are now equipped with numerous safety features, such as roll bars, which turn the car over in the event that they're upside down. Unfortunately, in Joe's case in Silverstone this year, the roll bar was broken, so he continued to move upside down. Obviously, they have really intricate seat belts which keep them strapped in, and they also have built-in fire extinguishers in the event of a fire inside the cockpit. They also have something called the survival cell, which is basically a little bathtub which they sit in. The entire car around them is meant to crumble except for that survival cell that will stay intact. This cushions the driver on impact and hopefully will reduce the amount of injuries. Another feature on modern F1 tracks is that they have to meet a certain safety standard. This could mean a certain number of tech pro barriers or runoff areas. And of course, they have to have medical facilities on the site. They also have a helicopter and pilots ready for the entirety of the weekend in case of an emergency there's always going to be a risk involved in high-speed motorsports like F1. But luckily for us, there are significant efforts that are always made to ensure the safety of drivers, spectators and other participants, so hopefully we never, ever lose a driver, marshal or spectator again.